Hi everyone, I am Chef Manuel Bouillet. I am Chef Alexis Bouillet. And today we're going to introduce you our favorite brioche made with Saint Rémy, banana, and caramel. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so now before we start our brioche, we need to start first our fermented dough. Fermented dough is actually quite important. This is what will bring you some flavor into your brioche later on and will also participate to a good fermentation. So first, to start this uh, brioche, uh, this fermented uh, dough, we have to start with the T65 flour, the sea salt and sugar together. We're gonna place them into the KitchenAid bowl. On the side, we have also the dry golden yeast. So we just place on the side on, and we cover with some, uh, some flour just to make sure it doesn't go in contact with the cold meat. Here. Then we also have a small quantity of butter. And then we'll combine everything with the hook. And to finish it, we have the milk and water as well. So we combine all together and we will mix it at medium speed for about 6 to 8 minutes until we reach 24 degrees. Okay, so now our dough is very elastic. So around 24 degrees Celsius. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make like a round shape, very, very tight, and then place it next to me uh, into like a container and then wrap it. We're gonna keep it outside for at least one hour, you know, to start the fermentation. And then we let it rest overnight in the refrigerator. Then tomorrow we'll use it for our brioche. So you can use this kind of fermented dough when you start a, a brioche, but of course, if you have already made previously a brioche dough, you can also use it as a replacement as this one. Okay, so now dough is ready. And then we just wrap it. And then we'll be ready for tomorrow. So now we are ready for the Saint Rémy brioche. So we have here our fermented dough. It has been resting overnight. So I'm gonna place it here inside the bowl. Then we will have the T55 flour, T65, and then sea salt. And so to make also the second fermentation, we are gonna add some dry golden yeast. We just cover with some flour. Then we are gonna add the butter. So all ingredients must be cold. And you will understand why, because the more we're gonna mix our brioche, the more heat we're gonna generate. So we do not want to go over 24, but I will get back on it later on. Then over here, we have our milk, eggs, and then we have the honey. Then on the side, we're gonna scale our Saint Remy. The only ingredient that we do not want to add at this time is sugar. What we wanna do is to start to mix the dough and then around like 21, 22 degrees Celsius, when we'll have a very nice elasticity, then we start to add our sugar, then bring the dough finally to 24 degrees Celsius. For this dough, I will use the hook and then I will start medium speed. So the idea, the first stage of the process is just to mix all the ingredients together and then after we develop the dough to get a nice elasticity. So our brioche is now around 20 degrees Celsius then it's gonna be time to add the sugar. Actually, the temperature of course matters, but the most important is the texture. You don't want to have the dough sticking to the side of the bowl. That means the dough is now elastic. So progressively, let's add the sugar. So this step is quite important because as soon as the sugar is inside the brioche, it will become like a syrup. So it will take a few more minutes to combine the sugar to the brioche until we get something very elastic and smooth. 
So now we're gonna reach uh, 24 degrees Celsius and then we will stop the dough and I will show you how to fold it nicely and let ferment. See you in a bit. Okay, so now if we take the temperature, the brioche should be around 24 degrees Celsius. So that's good. And you will see that we should have a very nice elasticity. It's not only about the temperature, it's also about how to see if the brioche is good or not. So to do that, then we're gonna take a small piece of the brioche and then check how it is. So I just take a little piece and we can easily stretch uh, the dough, what we call a window pan. So what is a window pan? We just stretch it delicately and we get like a, almost like a window and you see it doesn't uh, break. So that means we have a nice uh, gluten into uh, this brioche and that will help us to, to keep nicely the structure of our brioche during the baking process. So then at the end, we should have something nice and round. You can just shape it by hand or even on the table if you want to. And then we're gonna place it back in our bowl over here. And we're gonna let it ferment for 45 minutes to one hour. We'll cover it, of course. And then in one hour, I will show you how to do the last folding before we refrigerate overnight. Okay, so after 45 minutes of fermentation, now it's time to give it a fold. This step is actually really important because by stretching the dough and folding the dough, then we will give it more elasticity. So I am gonna stretch it. And as you can see, I prepared previously a plastic wrap on my table. And that would be way easier for me to make it more clean, but also more efficient because at the end we will wrap it. So over here, a little bit to the left, to the right, and then over here, the other part, we fold it, then to the back, and then to the front. So now you should have something that's like really nice and tight. At this stage, we are ready. We see that our dough is nicely elastic and we're gonna wrap it and let it ferment overnight in the chiller. This will allow us time to create a nice fermentation and then of course to bring more flavors. So we'll see you tomorrow. So for our brioche, we're gonna start now to do the cream. This is the step number two. This cream will be flavored with caramel and of course Saint Remy. First to start our caramel cream, we have to start with our caramelized sugar. We're gonna do what we call a dry caramel. We do not have any water in this recipe. So I'll start my induction and progressively start to dissolve my sugar. And on my side, we have placed in our mixing bowl here the cream and we are just reheat into the microwave or in a saucepan, up to you, uh, until it's boiling. And then we'll pour this hot uh, cream over the dry caramel. So over here, what we want is to dissolve the sugar progressively. If you put the sugar at once, then it will burn at the bottom and will not dissolve properly. So here I'm gonna finalize the remaining sugar. And on my side, I need to make sure that the cream is really warm, ready to pour over the dry caramel. Over here, we want to have a dry caramel that's not too dark and not too light. It's too light would be very sweet. It's too dark would be very, very bitter. So we wanna be kind of in between and to have a nice, uh, like caramel color. So we have to make sure that first we dissolve all the sugar and then we'll pour the cream progressively. So right now we can see that our caramel color is like brown, it's kind of golden brown, so now it's fine. So we need to reduce the induction at the minimum and then pour progressively. So I just had around one quarter in the beginning just to dissolve the, the caramel base and then following by one more time. We suggest you to uh, take a bigger size for your saucepan because it's gonna go slightly up. On my side, I'm gonna prepare the second part which is yolks and cornstarch just to uh, mix them together. 
Over here on this side, you want to make sure that the caramel is well dissolved into the cream. It will be ready for our pastry cream. Okay, so now our mixture of yolks and cornstarch is ready. I'm gonna start to pour progressively my hot caramel mixture over it and then combine well at the same time. So you just dissolve correctly the base of uh, yolks, cornstarch, and uh, warm uh, caramel. And then we put everything back into the saucepan for the cooking process. So I'm gonna restart my induction and now we're gonna cook it as a pastry cream. So we see now that the more we are cooking it, now it's gonna get thicker and thicker. This is the reaction of our cornstarch. We want to have kind of a thick texture and make sure that the cornstarch reacted pretty well. So we can see now that we have a nice and thick texture but slightly more fluid because the cornstarch reacted uh, pretty well. And now we're gonna just stop it and add our gelatin mass. So it is now time to dissolve the gelatin and cool it down at 40 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna place that in the refrigerator or in the freezer for a couple minutes and then we'll get back to it in a bit. So our caramel cream is now approximately at 40 degrees Celsius and then it's gonna be time to add the flour de sel, the butter and of course the sarami. Then we're gonna use our hand blender in order to emulsionate our cream. So we start first with the sea salt and also the butter and when all is well emulsionated, we'll add at the end the Saint Remy. So we're gonna scrape nicely also around it. That will help to have something nice and smooth. And then blend one more time. Our caramel salami cream is now done. As you can see, it's quite smooth, but it's still very, very fluid. So in order to have a very nice texture, then we need to refrigerate it for a couple of hours and then we'll be able to use it. So we're now ready for the coffee for our brioche. So this will be based over here with the banana puree and passion fruit puree together. And on the side, I have placed together sugar and also the NH pectin. It is quite important to combine together just to make sure we have no lumps when we add it uh, to our uh, base puree. So before adding the sugar and the pectin, you want to make sure that your purees are completely melted and we will add sugar and pectin before 40 degrees Celsius. This will allow us uh, a good environment for the pectin in order to absorb the humidity and to react pretty well. Okay, so now it's time for our sugar and pectin and we want to add those two progressively and whisk really well at the same time. So then after incorporating all the sugar and pectin, we are just bring to a boil and after we just transfer it to a container just to cool it down. Then we just store into the fridge at 3 degrees until it's completely set. We'll just place a cling film on top of it and then place in the refrigerator or if you want to go slightly faster, you can also place it in the freezer for a couple of minutes. So the brioche has been resting overnight so we have a very nice fermentation so the taste will be amazing later on. So we want to cut small pieces about 23 grams because in those banana shapes small, we place three of them. So that will be roughly 70 grams total. So before uh, placing the dough inside the mold, I have to slightly spray it in order to release the ring more easily. So the next step over here, we have the 23 grams uh, brioche. I'm gonna just flatten it with my hand and then I will put the outside towards the inside 
and we'll go all around it to create like a round shape. Then at the end, we just flip it and I'm gonna shape it nicely with my hand. We should have something very smooth and very round towards the end. So over here we have the three pieces together and then we leave a little bit of space between each one and then we're gonna have to prove them. When they will prove, they will join together and form the final brioche. So our brioche are now shaped and we're gonna place them in a proofer for about two hours at 27 degrees Celsius and 75% humidity. We are now ready for our macaronade. So over here, it will actually create a skin on top of the brioche. It will be very crunchy with an almond flavor. So here, inside the bowl in front of me, I have the almond flour, the flour T55, the powder sugar, and also the corn starch. I'm just gonna combine them together with a whisk. And the two remaining ingredients will be egg white. So this is what we're gonna pour first. And on the side to dissolve also the mix, we have some extra grapeseed oil. So we simply combine those with a whisk until we have a kind of a thick paste. Okay, so as you can see now, the paste is pretty smooth. So that's what we need. And then now let's transfer to piping bag ready for our brioche. So at this time we can simply refrigerate it until we use it. Okay, so now our brioche are nicely proofed, so they approximately double the volume. And our almond macaronade is ready, and I'm gonna simply pipe on the top. On my side, I have in my hands some uh, almond slice. I'm just gonna sprinkle some over the macaronade. To finish our brioche, we're gonna sprinkle some powdered sugar. Our brioche are now ready to bake at 160 for about 20 minutes. Okay, so now our brioche are perfectly baked. You see, they have a nice gold brown color. So by using a chopstick, I'm gonna just flip them and then make a hole in the center of each, like a round shape. So just like a small hole. And first we're gonna start to fill with our caramel cream. Over here I transfer the caramel cream into a piping bag and then we will fill it with the banana confit. And then we do just half, half, half uh, for the creme and half for the confit. So over here what we want to do is to not specially decorate with anything. The decoration will be the macaronade with the almonds and of course the powder sugar. This is something that you need to sell to go to transport outside. So no decoration really needed for this product. Okay, so now our brioche is done. This is time for tasting. So I really love this kind of product because you can easily keep it at room temperature as any uh, products for bakeries, of course. And uh, you have a nice herd between the banana flavor, the Saint Remy, and also the caramel. We can really hear the crunch already. And the inside should be uh, nicely uh, filled with the banana confit and then the caramel uh, cream. Yeah, crunchy on the outside and uh, really fluffy and moisty in the inside. Absolutely. So what I really like is to rip nice like the brioche uh, like this. Generous and to have a perfect slice of... Mm. I think it's going perfect for our breakfast. Absolutely. Generous with the cream. And the sour really enhances the flavor of the banana, you know? So it gives a little kick for the banana and the caramel. Totally. We really hope you enjoyed this kind of brioche. This is really like the perfect uh, breakfast uh, brioche and easy also to eat outside and enjoy. <laughs>